Well, here we are at the Eucalyptus booth at VMworld, and we're going to check out a demo of Eucalyptus 2.0. And to do that, we have a uh, new eucalyptus -er. What What do you guys call yourself? Eucalyptusites, koalas? Um, I think our studio likes calling us eucalyptides. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. I I'm a eucalyptide, first of all. <laughs> And my name is Shashi Mysur. I'm a product specialist at Eucalyptus System. So this is the conceptual architecture of uh, how a eucalyptus cloud is typically deployed. There are a couple of controller components um, that these are all software components that can be overlaid on top of an existing ID infrastructure. So essentially, you know, uh, our audience might be already be aware of this. It's a software layer. Once you overlay on top of an existing infrastructure, it transforms it into an easy to like cloud. And underneath the layer, the cloud computing layer, you can have multiple hypervisors. So on the left here, what you see is a Zen-based or a KVM-based cluster, and on to your right is a VMware-based cluster. So you can have multiple hypervisors underneath the same cloud, and our users now have the ability to manage multiple hypervisors as part of the same cloud. Uh, right, so, so they can be heterogeneous, Exactly. We are kind of hypervisor agnostic. So you can have multiple hypervisors, and yet expose an EC2 compatible interface for self-service provisioning to your end users. So the cloud controller is a software component. That's a eucalyptus component, right? Uh, which is a software component. Uh, it acts as a front end to your eucalyptus cloud. And is also the brain behind the cloud in the sense that it handles the resource provisioning and manages the scheduling decisions. Also exposes administrative interface. The administrator can administer or manage users, manage images, manage groups of users. Uh, quotas for each of these groups, extract accounting information for feeding into your chargeback or billing systems, uh, and also manage images uh, and, and, and set certain access control policies on these images. Right. The Walrus here is uh, another software component part of the Eucalyptus uh, cloud computing platform, which is equivalent to Amazon's S3. Ah, right. And the cluster controller is actually a front-end component for every cluster. So, in other words, you can slice your cloud into multiple clusters, and these clusters could be based on different hypervisors, or they could be based on different data centers. You know, if you have multiple data centers dispersed geographically across different locations, you can still manage them as part of the same cloud by having multiple clusters. Right. So the front end for every cluster is called a cluster controller, and the storage controller here is a component in Eucalyptus which implements the Amazon EBS functionality, the Elastic Block Store functionality. Right. And then we have a couple of node controllers and uh, VMware brokers which, uh, which are essentially responsible for managing the compute nodes or the workhorse machines in your Eucalyptus cloud. So that was a quick high-level overview of the conceptual architecture. So we saw the, uh, the, the sort of topology, if you will, the layout of, of, of a uh, eucalyptus-based cloud. That's right. Cloud. One, one of the possible reference architecture, possible sure. layouts. Yes. And, and so this, what we're seeing now is sort of the, uh, the first encounter a user might have with, with, with the cloud. <laughs> This is the, uh, the administrative interface that gets exposed to a cloud administrator. Once you've deployed a Eucalyptus cloud, the administrator begins configuring the cloud and managing the users by logging into this administrative interface. So once logged in, you can modify your credentials or you can modify your uh, account information. You can download your cryptographic credentials. You know, these are the cryptographic credentials that are generated by Eucalyptus for uh, all of the users, including the administrator, and the X.509 certificates, just like you have the certificates in Amazon EC2, we, we generate those certificates for every user. And for all of the tools that utilize the query interface, we also provide the query ID and the secret key, so you can quickly download it and use it as part of your uh, end user tools. You can manage all of your images, so you have an image catalog that Eucalyptus can, uh, uh, that administrators can expose to their end users so that end users can choose from one among these image, images from the catalog and spin up a virtual machine in an on-demand basis via a self-service provisioning interface. And as an administrator, you will also be able to manage your users. So you can add users to the cloud, you can import users from an existing LDAP or Active Directory, uh, you can import group information, and, uh, and associate a notion of grouping on top of these users, say, some of your users might belong to uh, different customers. You know, they might be different customers using your cloud, or they might be users belonging to different groups like sales, marketing, engineering, R&D. So you can specify those groups, and you can go a step further and associate certain quotas for each of these groups, saying this group is uh, entitled to utilize resource from this only, res this only this resource pool. So that way you have some certain constraints on how much resource right. a particular group can use. You can set the policy based on the identity. Used. That's exactly right. You can also extract accounting information on the usage of the cloud on a per group basis or even on a per user basis, saying, 
this particular user or this particular group, how much of cloud resource did, did they use in a given time window? Uh, it could be virtual machine resources, like how many VMs, for how long did these VMs run, uh, what types of VMs were they, and EBS storage, how big were these storages, for how long did they use these storage, and so on and so forth. And you can extract this re reporting information in multiple formats, like PDF, or a CSV file, or an XML, or an HTML, and feed it into your you know, chargeback or billing model. As an administrator, you'll also be able to configure the cloud, like the cloud configuration, the, where the cloud controller is, what the DNS configuration is, your Walrus, which is equivalent to Amazon's S S3, wh what kind of storage is it using? And you can also set certain quotas on, on a per user basis on how big the bucket should be, how many buckets a user can use, and so on and so forth. You can also manage your clusters. You can have Zen cluster, a KVM cluster, a VMware cluster, all under the same cloud. And as an administrator, you'll be able to specify the virtual machine types. So M1.small in this case is a single CPU with 128 MB RAM and 2 gig disk drive, but you can modify these values. So that was an administrative uh, view of uh, the cloud. From an end user perspective, you can use a variety of client-side tools to self-service provision yourself cloud resources. When I say that, these, uh, these client tools could be command line driven tools, they could be uh, uh, hosted web services, you know, so that you have a web-based graphical interface mm. to request for cloud resources. Some of them are on-premise tools as well, so you have a management tool and the cloud totally within your firewall, right. uh, instead of having to go through a hosted service which is hosted outside your firewall. So one such on-premise graphical UI is uh, Elastic Fox. You know, it's a small plug into your Firefox browser. It was originally distributed by Amazon for enabling its users to obtain a graphical UI-based interface to manage the uh, EC2 cloud. And because of the interface compatibility, you can use exactly the same tool uh, and manage your on-premise Eucalyptus cloud. Right. So for example, you can view all of your images. You can simply choose on an image, uh, click on the launch button, you know, choose your virtual machine type. Uh, you can choose your cluster and simply click on the launch button. There you go. What we just did was using Elastic Fox, we are spinning up virtual machines on a VMware-based environment, and that's being displayed in this you know, instances tab, saying Eucalyptus is uh, instantiated this instance. Uh, the, this, here is the instance ID, and the state is still pending. It already assigned an IP address, so once the, in a couple of minutes it's going to be up and running and you can access this virtual machine just like uh, you would any other virtual machine. You can view your images, key pairs, your security groups, elastic IPs, volumes and snapshots. So RightScale is another example of a hosted service. You can you know, add more clouds, you can manage multiple clouds, you can manage your Eucalyptus cloud, your Amazon AWS cloud, all with the same dashboard. Uh, you can uh, view your images, you can view your instances, your SSH keys, IP addresses, very similar to the one that we saw on HybridFox, except that uh, RightScale also provides certain additional capabilities like server templates, monitoring, uh, application clusters, you, you can deploy a cluster on a Eucalyptus cloud on a click of a mouse button. And then again, the point is because you guys are Amazon compatible, as it were, you can use tools that you would be using with Amazon. That's absolutely right. Just, just to add to that same point, you know, Instratus is yet another tool that exists in the Amazon ecosystem, provides uh, you know, billing capabilities, you can define roles, you can view all your images, you can view all your instances in your Eucalyptus cloud, and with the same tool, you can simply switch to an Amazon AWS cloud as well. So that's a classic way of right. you know, managing multiple uh, a hybrid cloud, a public and a private cloud, to the same dashboard. That was a very quick overview of uh, uh, an on-premise uh, private cloud with Eucalyptus and how you can manage multiple hypervisor environments. We have set up a small Eucalyptus cloud right here that's sitting underneath this desk uh, with a couple of laptops running ESX VMware-based hypervisor environment. I can give you a very quick, you know, probably a one or two minute overview of how to quickly spin up a virtual machine on your VMware-based environment yeah, to yeah. Eucalyptus. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll switch over to the other screen and check Thank that you. out. So what you see here on the screen um, is an interface to your, to your cloud. So this is a yet another command line driven access or the self-service provisioning tool that end users could use to request for cloud resources. And it's called the Yuka tool. So I'm going to use the Yuka tools to demonstrate certain capabilities of Eucalyptus and how you can lo quickly launch virtual machines and obtain access to these virtual machines in a VMware-based environment through the self-service provisioning portal. A couple of things, as an administrator, uh, you will be able to query the cloud and view all of the cloud resources. You can describe availability zones. Verbos would actually 
display all of the cloud resources that exist in your cloud. For example, the virtual machines, the amount of number of virtual machines you have free, the maximum capacity of the cloud. And this one is a pretty small cloud because this is a, based on a two laptop sitting underneath the desk. Uh, but essentially, on, on this cloud, you can run four virtual machines at the max of M1 dot small type. What I'm gonna, now going to demonstrate is how we can use uh, any client tool that exists in the Amazon ecosystem and use it with Eucalyptus to instantiate a virtual machine on your VMware-based environment. And at the top portion of the screen here is uh, a view into your ESX-based environment through a vSphere client. So what I'm now going to do is uh, look at my image catalog which is to say you can describe images. And I see that we have a, a single CentOS image uploaded as part of the image catalog. And I'm going to use this image and do a Yuka run command, which is essentially spinning up a virtual machine based on a particular EMI. All right. So what we just did was using a client tool, you know, we saw Hybrid Fox, that was another client-side tool. This Yuka tool is yet another client-side tool, as I just mentioned. So you can use the same tool set uh, and spin up a virtual machine and we can start okay. observing that on the ESX machine we have started spinning up uh, right. a Eucalyptus instance. Right. And in uh, just a couple of minutes it's going to be up and running and uh, it's available for use for the end user. I can view the status by doing a Eucalyptus describe instances. There it is. We had one virtual machine which was running, the other one is in the pending state. It's in the pending state and you can also monitor the status here. In a couple of minutes it's going to be up and running. All right, right. There you go. So it, it, it's like uh, you guys integrate with a bunch of different platforms, <laughs> that, <laughs> essentially, in tools. So that's, that is uh, right. And that's one of the advantages of having an easy to compatible interface. So you can overlay all of the different tools like the service cataloging, monitoring, chargeback, billing systems on top of your existing VMware environment via Eucalyptus. Right. Well, that's great. Well, uh, thanks for sh showing us all that.